picking up where we lesson six two. Struggling with what lesson we're on. Only because I have students in chapter five, eight, and six. Oh. That's my problem. I can't keep track. Freak out. Oh yeah, because Because we do P one, two, three, eight, four, five, six. So Okay, so we were looking at all of these um, how to write our Riemann sum. Okay, we had talked on the previous page. It kind of gave us a procedure a little bit there, with finding delta of x, finding x of k, um, and writing our formula there. So, which is what that top section talks about up there. The definite integral of a continuous function f of x over the interval a to b denoted by, so that's the integral from a to b of f of x dx, is the limit of a Riemann sum as the number of subdivisions approaches infinity. So what we're saying here, so first of all, area. Remember when we talk integrals, we're talking area under a curve. So area is going to be equal to the integral from A to B, so those are going to be your endpoints um, of the integral of the function dx. This is equivalent to the limit as n approaches infinity. So it's as these rectangles are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, there's more and more and more of them, what, you know, summing them all up. Um, these definitions should look familiar from the previous page. x of k equals a times delta x times k, and delta x is b minus a times n. Okay. That was stuff we talked about last Friday. So let's look at example five now. Given the graph of the function f of x equals one half x squared plus one on the interval zero to four. So we're looking at that parabola, but it's only on the interval zero to four. This exact area can be represented using definite integral notation. The integral from zero to four of one half x squared plus one times dx. Write the definite integral as a right Riemann sum with eight equal subdivisions. Okay, so we want a right Riemann sum and eight subdivisions. Okay, well, if you want to pull some information, huh? They're all a half each. Okay. They're all a half each. And officially, what do we have what what information do you know that's helping you figure that out? In other words, what's A and B? Um, a is zero. Or a. no. It is. Yeah. A is zero, B is four. Are you guys with her? A is zero, B and four B is four because A and B are my intervals, or it's the endpoints of the interval. What's in? Eight. N is eight because that is how many subdivisions are there? See, if nothing else, I'm just trying to review what each of these pieces stand for, right? As I see some looks of, um, okay, so N is the number of intervals. And then um, to confirm what Sophie just said, you guys remember how to find delta X? It's on this page. Okay, delta X is the... B minus A over N, so 4 minus 0 over 8, which just so happens to be 1 half. And I get it. There's logic, too. That isn't there. From 0 to 4 is 4. If we need 8 subdivisions, they're each one a width of 1 half. However, I'm reinforcing the formula because are they always that easy? No. no. Okay, so thus the formula will get you there. Okay, so right Riemann sum. If you go back, and I'm trying to think. Well, we just did the first part of the procedure. If you go back to the top of page 339, find the width of each rectangle on the interval from A to B. We found delta X, yes? Find the right endpoint of each rectangle, and that is using that formula that's up above, where it's X of K equals A plus delta XK. Well, what do we know? A is 0, delta X is 1 half times K. Zero. Right. 
Well, K is just K right now. Oh, okay. I was we wondering don't... if it was zero. Oh, never mind. I was looking at something different. Never mind. Okay. Yes. Never mind. Okay. Now, and obviously, do we have to write that zero in there? No. When I, re when I use this in my next step, I'm not going to write zero. Okay, so that is the step two on the procedure. And I'm just flipping back to those pages to give you guys reference. Step three is um, finding the area of the kth rectangle where f of x sub k is the height. And so, which, okay, I think, first of all, let's write down, we know what x of k is, yes? Actually, I guess, yeah. So what is f of x sub k? Over, or one half. Oh. F of x is one half x squared and plus then, one. Would it be? How do you put the k in there? Okay. So f of x is one half x squared plus one. We're not just subbing in k. We're subbing in x of k. Okay, what is x of k? Which x of k is one half k, right? So it'd be one fourth. Don't jump there yet. So it's going to be what? One half times what? One half k quantity squared plus one. You see where, do you see the pieces? Yeah. And do you see why I told you don't say one fourth? Yes. Because it's not one fourth. It's not. Okay. And in all honesty, I'm recalling. Yeah, we usually just leave it as that one. Oh, you don't okay. usually take it the next form. Because it was all scrolling around. I, was like, oh. I know. That's why I was like, I don't think I, I don't think I would have taken okay. the next form, but that's why I had to check. So, okay. So now, and then keep in mind. Okay. So and then keep in mind, and we'll write this out in the next step. The area is the width times the height. Well, the height. This is the height right here. So we're going to be doing f of x sub k and then times the width. Remember, width is your delta x. Okay, so we're going to be taking those two pieces to find our area. Now, I don't know. I have it drawn on my picture. It was a right Riemann sum. What does a right Riemann sum look like here? Uh, it touches at the right. So like if I start over here at 4, it touches at 4 and then goes left a half, right? And that's what your first rectangle would look like. Well, I say first rectangle because it's first I drew, but it's kind of the last in the interval, isn't it? So, and I, not even that we have to, but again, I'm trying to practice, so... These rectangles, whoops, you're trying to grab where it touches the number on the right. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so where that last rectangle almost looks exact, doesn't it? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like much of an under or overestimate. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our Riemann sum then. Now, so if you're following in the steps on the previous page, write Riemann sum. K values go from 1 to N. Okay, so in this case, summation from K equals 1 to N. What's in? Eight. Okay. And then, and you can also be looking up right above, right? Hmm, I don't have it on here, but I forgot to write something. Okay, I'll put it on here in a moment. And then it is the f of x sub k times delta x. So f of x sub k is the one-half 
times 1 half k quantity squared plus 1. There's the f of x sub k, yes? And then times delta x, which what is delta x? 1 half. One half. Okay, sorry, I did it differently here than what I did in my notes, and I confused myself along the way. So right here, we've got the, there's your width, there's your height. Now, unless I purposely left it off for some reason, what did I forget in front of that summation sign? No, not the integral oh, sign. Limit. The limit. Eight approaches infinity. Limit is in approaches infinity. I don't know why I did it, but here's the deal. I don't even have it here, which means I really left it off last year, or I remember the same time I'm doing right now, and then I still didn't go back and write it in. So maybe if I remember later today, I'll go back and write it in. Sorry. I'll remember next year and think of all of us. Yeah. Okay. So that's following. I Did you follow the process with me? Okay, sorry, I didn't blow these up, so these pages are messy, I know. Okay, get your calcs with you. Do we? It's all charged up now. I was trying to remember who, who that was when I saw it this morning, but. Okay, use your calculator to evaluate the definite integral. The integral from 1 to 2 of x plus 1 dx. Keep in mind, we don't know how to take an integral yet, do we? It didn't charge. How charged it? Still red charged. What? Well, okay, did you turn it off and back on. Okay, it must not have sat in there right then. I didn't mess, I didn't think to check it. I literally saw it orange before I left. And so then I call it into quits. Well, you're supposed to have a light on it, doesn't it? Yeah, so... Okay, we can try it again today, and I'll check it. <laughs> I didn't think to check it, because I just assumed it was charging. Okay, um, there are options. Have we found where to go? I went to the math button. Okay. F and int. Okay. So, we're trying to do this integral. See, eventually we'll learn how to do it by hand. We're doing this integral on the calculator. So it's alpha, sure. F2... So, you can go to Math 9, is what I have written down in my notes. Oh. And Math 9, it says Fn int. So, that is function integral. But when you go there, sorry, I'm trying to change my TV over and I'm not processing very well. Any chance? Nope. We don't want to see school, Jane. And I don't even know if I really need to show this on the calculator, but when you go to number nine, it brings you up. Um, let's see, that right there, yes? Mm -hmm. Type it in. Integral from one to two of x plus one dx. Hit enter. And it equals? 2.5. And again, eventually we'll learn how to take the integral of x plus one and evaluate it from 1 to 2 by hand, because that is a necessary skill. However, when you have the calculator on your AP test, if you have the calculator, you don't have to show work for this, because you're, that's something you're allowed to do on the calculator. Okay, so it depends on where you're at on the test. So, if you want to write yourself a note, it is in math menu number 9. Or it is in that alpha F2 menu number four. Because a lot of the basics we use a lot are in that alpha F2 menu. So, okay. Find the corresponding Riemann sum for this definite integral. Okay. Well, thoughts. How do I find the width? It's 2.5. No. 
A and B, and then I don't know what N is. Okay, what is A? One. What is B? Two. Because it's the integral from A to B, yes. So A is one, B is two, and guess what N is? Zero. It's N. Oh. We don't have it because this is this is the idea of as N approaches infinity. Okay, the integral is as n approaches infinity. So in order to do delta x, it's going to be b minus a over n, which is one. Okay. 2 minus 1 over n, or in other words, 1 over n. Tongue tied, eesh. So that's delta x, 1 over n. x sub k. We had a formula up above, yes? Mm -hmm. X sub K is A plus, sorry, I'm writing the formula, delta X times K. So that's going to be what? 1 plus 1 over N times K. Okay. 1 plus 1 over N times K. And I think, yeah, I just left it like that. Okay. Height. F of X sub K. So what is X sub K? X sub K is? 1 plus 1 over N. Okay. 1 plus 1 over N times K. F of X sub K says we take X sub K and plug it in where? F of X. What is F of X? 1 plus X plus 1. Okay. F of X is your function, which is X plus 1. So, in order to do this, so it's going to be X, which, what are we plugging in in place of X? 1 plus 1 over N times K. 1 plus 1 over N times K. There's X sub K, and then what? Plus 1. Can you clean that up a little bit? Are we allowed to? Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay. And in fact, that's what I thought. I do have it cleaned up in mine. 2 plus 1, 2 K over N. 2 plus, yes, I have it as K over N, actually. And here's the deal. It's actually better when they don't clean it up because it's easier to see all the pieces. However, do they clean it up sometimes and make you work hard to figure out the pieces? Yeah. They do. Okay, so, you know, it's good to see both. Okay, so we have the width, we have the height, write the corresponding Riemann sum. Is it as n approaches infinity? It is, and we're not going to forget it this time. Is that what you're saying? Mm, nope. The limit as n approaches infinity of... The summation. Gosh, I hate What's K? Yeah. It's one. I'm trying to come up with. One. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with the why should I, why should we know that? One, two. Yeah. Well. And I guess, hmm. Because it's one over n. Hmm. Because this is going to be k equals 1 to n, because it's the limit as n approaches infinity there. That's why this, I just had an aha moment, sorry. I legitimately did not have the limit as n approaches infinity because it's one there's no n oh. on this one up here. We're going to do the same exact thing next year. <laughs> You're probably right. Because I think part of my issue this year is where we stopped. My brain, like, wasn't, I don't know. So is it one? It is one. And how do we know? That's what I'm trying to, I think it's just kind of a default. Okay. Okay, it's one of those, it's a default that it's 1 to n, unless there's something telling us to do a left Riemann sum, which is the 0 to n minus 1, then, 
the default is to do the one to n. Okay. I'm looking for a better answer. I don't have it at this exact moment. Trust me, I'll let you know if I when I come up with it, but it will hit me at some point. I'll be like, oh yeah, that's why I should have said it. Okay. Now, so the limit, and this, okay, and right here, k equals one to n. That's your default. F of x sub k times delta x. We have f of x sub k, yes? Mm -hmm. That is the 2 plus k over n times delta x, which is 1 over n. Okay. Um, D ask us to evaluate the limit of your rem of your Riemann sum on a calculator, and then what is the answer? Now, in order to do evaluate the limit of the Riemann sum, we have to have a way to do the limit here. Which, and here's what I have written in my notes. In her notes, when I checked her notes out about this, she does a lot of stuff on the um, Inspire. The Inspire is a fancier calculator. It does this. I cannot find, and I've looked at some math groups and stuff, I can't find a way to do this on the TI-84. Okay? And it's not something you'd be expected to do on an AP test or something. So I'm just going to say, guess what it equals? 2.5. Okay, and that's the thing. I mean, this was the integral. We basically translate it down to the Riemann sum. It is should equal 2.5. Okay, trust me. I tried and tried and tried to find a way to do this on the TI-84. Yeah, it, it didn't happen for me. So, I might be saying that prematurely, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just They're not something that's fun to me, but that's, that's my favorite part. Just me personally. Okay. Here we go. In each of the following problems, translate the definite integral into a Riemann sum. Kind of what we just did. Be sure to check that both forms yield the same numeric values. And again, we don't really have a way to plug this in in terms of the Riemann sum, but we can the integral. So. Let's practice this with A. The integral from 2 to 4 of 3x squared minus 1 dx. So we're looking for the limit expression of a Riemann sum. Excuse me. Is this what we just did before? Pretty much. Okay. Which makes me wonder if we want to do all of these or not, but we'll see. Okay. What can you tell me? A is 2 to A. Delta X. Well. 2 to A is 2, B is 4. We're all there, yes? Yeah. Delta X. Oh, I should have filled in the actual numbers. So used to filling in my formula there. B minus A over N, so 4 minus 2 over N, which is? 2 over N. 2 over N. Okay. What about um, delta x plus a? Okay, so the x sub k, is that what you're working on? Yeah, that's why I was just trying to decide. That's why, I, oh my gosh. I jumped down to the wrong page on my paper. I was like, what are we? It's rough today, folks. X sub K is A plus delta X times K. Yes. And that's what Hannah's trying to fill in, which is what I'm trying to fill in. I'm just struggling. F or X of K is what? 2 plus 2 over N. Is it a given that it's approaching infinity? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Will it always be like that? Mm -hmm. okay. Unless we know what n is, and then there's and then no there's limit no at all, which is where I messed up earlier. Okay. 
Okay. Do we have all the information? I think. Yeah. Which is three x squared minus one. Yeah. So, what I guess one thing we can talk about is what is f of x? F of just plain x is the three x squared minus one. Yes. So then f of x sub k is going to be plugging into that. And I guess I didn't write that out specifically by itself. I just kind of went from here. So the limit as it approaches infinity of k equals 1 to n. We're good on this part. And then it's f of x sub k. So f of x is 3 times x squared minus 1. So I'm going to do what? 3 times what? 2 plus 2 over 10 k is 1 mm -hmm. So 2 plus, and you can if you want, say 2k over n quantity squared. If you wanted that 2, to, 2 over n times k, you can also say it is 2k over n. Both are good. Right. So this is, where are we at? This is 3 times x squared, and then we need a minus, minus 1. That's f of x sub k right there, times delta x, which is the 2 over n. Do I have all the pieces according to my answer key? I do. It's the same piece as we've done on the last couple. Are we doing the... Oh, yes. I don't know. We do need to fill in the value here. Why I can't do the limit of the summation, what can I do on the calculator? Plug in the interval. You can plug in the interval. So you can practice plugging in the interval. No, really? So practice, make sure you can get it right. That's the integral. That is the integral, yeah. Because I well As in, what we're plugging in is the integral, not the Riemann sum. So this is the, what, math 9? Or alpha F2 number 4? I didn't totally hear what you were asking, so that's why I was trying to, you know. Sometimes it's, are you guys asking me a question because you're confused or lost? Or are you talking to yourselves to figure it out? You know. I just wonder, like, who comes up with this well, Isaac Newton. People put Robert Einstein. Bonfire and they're just like, yeah, let's create intervals. Like, <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton. People put too much time. Loki Challenge. Didn't he, like, Loki <laughs> Challenge, literally. Wouldn't he do stuff out to, like, the 50th decimal? Whoever he on is. <laughs> That's what Daryl told me. Okay. I mean, I actually wouldn't take that long to go out to the 50th decimal. I don't know okay. if I did number A. Debating, do we need to do, um, let's just go ahead, B. Okay. Or we think we, I know, I was saying, let's Okay, just what, skip B and do C? Yeah. Yes. Oh, please. Or we could do both, that's why I was debating, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, is, does this one have a negative? Hmm. No. We should do both, because the negative A. Yeah, but zero minus two is. And then it would be a positive, so then it would just be. The same. Yeah, I mean, okay, that so my, that was my question. Let's go ahead and talk B. What is A? We're gonna go quicker this time, though. What is B? Zero. Zero. Because I wrote it up above. What is f of x? X plus three. X plus three quantity squared. What is delta x? Because officially you're doing B minus A, so 0 minus negative 2 divided by N, right? So thus it does end up positive 2 over N. X sub K? Negative 
Are you with her? Because A is negative 2, and then delta X times K. Um, I think I'm just going to go for the limit. You ready? The limit is in approaches infinity of the summation K equals 1 to N. F of X sub K. go another step and clean this up. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1 plus 2k over n quantity squared. And then did you guys get your delta x in there? Yep, times, two times the 2 over n. There we go. Now, and that's where I see the point of leaving it separated. I see, you know, clean up it looks nice, but if we're trying to undo that later, that's going to be harder to figure out but they don't always make it easy for us either. Are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay, C. Oh, oh, I didn't find it, I'm sorry. Mm. I wrote over that box so I ran out of a room and... You guys wanna go back and find B, you can real quick. How do you square it? Oh. You're going to have to use parentheses around the x plus 3. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to put parentheses before you start. In parentheses, there you go. Like that. Except, did you hit cube instead of square? Yep. I don't say it on my reading glasses on, but. Good job. Good job, Doug. What is that exact? 8 and 2 thirds. Or 26 thirds. Why? Why don't you just know that? Because 3 times 8 is 24 plus 3 is 2 thirds. I know he's not wrong, and I'm not saying that I'm not stupid. I'm just like... <laughs> I don't think it's that he knows it. He just did it quick. I think that's what got you. He didn't even think about it. He definitely did think about it. Okay, you got your A and B? Yes. A is zero, zero B is pi. pi, F of X is sine of X, delta X, yep, because pi minus zero over N is going to make it pi over N. <coughs> X sub K. Officially, it's supposed to be A, yes. So officially, it's supposed to be 0 plus, gosh darn it, why do I keep writing N instead of pi? Pi over N times K. Do you need to list the 0? No. Okay. So I agree, pi over N times K, or pi K over N. Okay, the limit as in approaches infinity. I should have made you guys tell me that part. Of J equals one. sum of k equals 1 to n. Of sine of pi over n times k. Q. 
sine of pi k over n or pi over n times k times pi over n times delta x which is pi over n. I did it. Mario, that's not Okay. Reverse. I'm good. Reverse. Yeah, I feel like I have, but I don't know. <laughs> Did Hannah just roll her eyes at me? Not well, I know what f of x is. Not at you, just f of x is 5x minus 1. Good job. Okay, so in each of the following, translate the Riemann sum into a definite integral. Check that both forms give the same result. And this is where without the inspire, we can't really do that. But, okay, you guys are finding stuff without me. Is it 0 and 5? Oh, oh, back up here. F of x is 5x minus 1. Delta x is 5 over. Okay, you guys are just seeing pieces. You've got this. <laughs> Okay. I don't think I'd say we got this. You have five to four ten. Yeah, I mean, it's still five. Five over. Okay, but it's zero to five. Okay, hold on. We'll get to that. That's say we'll save the A and a B for a moment. You know, up here we did A and B first. This is gonna be more the last list. Okay, so let's see. You guys spotted delta x to be what? Five over n. Five over n. Correct. Okay. X k is five k over n minus two. What? Say that again. Oh, x of k. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I was, Yeah, so the idea that x of k, originally it's a plus delta x times n, right? Er, what? Delta x times k. Hang with me here. And so based on a plus delta x times k, what what is this here? I think a is minus 2. Because if this is a plus delta x times k, that's this piece right here, yes? Yeah. This is x of k. And so this is going to be, if we reverse it, negative 2 plus 5k over n. Yeah. Hmm. Now, someone earlier, way earlier, said, gave me f of x. Or were you guys okay with f of x? Do you see f of x? f of x means? 5x minus 1. Because it's 5. x sub k plugged in minus 1. This is delta x. You guys don't want my help at all, do you? No, that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> that is a full no, you're lie. fine. You're fine. Oh, that scared me. Please don't. You're fine. You're fine. I'm just, you know. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you guys are trying to determine to figure this out. So at this point, in order to write the definite integral, we need the integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? Yeah. We have f of x. We just don't have our a and b well, we officially. Okay, we have our a, what you guys all kind of realized. A is negative two, negative two because that was dissecting x of k, right? Yes. And then the numerator of delta x is supposed to be... B minus A. B minus A. So we know that B, B minus A equals 5. If A is negative 2, so B minus negative 2 equals 5. Yes? Um, and some of you are like, I already jumped ahead and did this in my head. So B plus 2 equals 5. So B is 3. <laughs> huh? I said I was doing it in my head. But I should have done it. Okay. Well, and here's what I'm showing. Now I'm this is officially how it works. And I know you guys earlier were just saying, well, 5 minus 0, 10 minus 5. You're throwing out numbers that subtract B5. However, you have to realize A is given in that mess. Okay? So. I realize this will be different. The integral from what to what? Uh, negative 2 to 3. Negative 2 to 3 of? Uh, and the dx is default. It's always there. That represents the width of x, but it's always going to be there. 
Like I, I, you, you guys took it. You guys took it on. I'll tell you. That went a lot better than I expected. Okay. Okay. Throw something out at me. Okay. Are you guys with Hannah? Delta X is 2 over N. F of X is 3X plus 4. 3X plus 4. X subscript K is negative 2 plus 2K over N. Which way did you say that, Hannah? You were right. I just... Negative. <laughs> did you write the negative 2 first? Yeah. Okay, so you switched it. No, you're fine. Negative 2 plus 2 over n times k, if I want to even reverse it like that. Okay, and then that does tell us that oh, a is negative 2. Have we figured out b? Am I late to that game, I'm guessing? Yeah. Yeah, b is 0. Because we know. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. From delta x, b minus a is equal to 2. We already found that a is negative 2. So it becomes b plus 2 equals 2. So b is 0. That's fine. I just have to put something down writing. And although rarely all six seem to be together on this, so I'm putting way too much down, I guess. Okay, what'd you write? Zero on top and then negative two. Yeah. Negative two bottom. Yeah. Making sure you guys are watching. 3x plus 4 dx. I put the 3x plus 4 in parentheses though. Now, officially, the directions also said to check your answer. Could you plug these in? You could. We don't need to take time to do it. I'll tell you they're seven and a half and two. I'll take that spot that you guys always get mad at. I didn't really want to do it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh god. No, no. Is there more? Yep. Yeah. There's one more. Oh. Whoa. What is this? No, thank you. Well, well we know A is zero. How do you know that? Uh, what? <laughs> because I know because there's nothing no, I don't think so from so this one. B is pi. F of no. X is cosine. You've got to add that. That 6 has got to come in somewhere. That's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so 6. So pi over 6, yeah. Okay. Where are we at here? Delta Tell me something to get me started. Delta X is pi over 6. F of X is cosine X. I know that for sure. For certain. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Okay, delta x is pi over 6n, yeah. which, as we think about pi over 6n, it is pi over 6 times 1 over n, if you will. Okay, so what is that saying, then? Your normal numerator is going to be that pi over 6, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're good with that. Okay. And then our x sub k. x sub k is normally a plus delta x times k. What is our x sub k here? K pi over 6 in. It's k pi over 6 in. So, so Pi over or delta x times k. Do you see it? Delta x is pi over six. Pi over six n, six n. times k. That's this. Yes. Yeah. So, so your brains need to see a plus zero there, don't they? Mm -hmm. Make sure that piece matches up, and it does. That's why you know that delta x times k. I want to make sure I see delta x. I see k. Okay, that means my a is zero. I'm thinking so a is zero. Now, 
If A is 0, what is B minus A? B minus A is pi over 6 because that comes from delta X, right? Being B minus A over N. So if A is 0, then have I sold as I sold have I sold everybody that B is pi over six? Yes. Okay. Then f of x is cosine x. Yeah, that's that was easy. And then do we now agree that f of x is cosine x? Mm -hmm. Not that we ever disagreed, but you want to be careful about just jumping to assumptions right off the bat. Okay. You have to make sure all the pieces match up and are cared for, so to speak. Okay. You don't really need me for this part. Nope. Although I might need you because I've been making mistakes today. Zero. Okay. Okay. The integral from zero to pi over six of cosine x dx. Okay. Now, example eight. Uh, Time-wise, it works out well anyways, but I had B and C as a possible too much, not going to do them type thing. I have a question though. Uh huh. Just kidding. Okay. I don't remember it. I have no idea what okay. I said. Okay. We'll do that. Nice. Okay. Oh, yes. What is dx? Um, change in x or change change in x represents the width of the rectangles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Just like delta x represents the width, it represents the width. So, okay. So example eight. We'll try and get through a here. A Riemann sum in simplified form should be unsimplified before being translated into a definite integral. And this comes down into make sure you can find all of the pieces. Okay? And if you look at that example there, this is, you know, this limit right here, this is our Riemann sum. And so kind of like what we were just doing, right? Disassembling all the pieces. Well, this is all shoved together as k to the third over n to the fourth. Being able to break this apart and realize delta x is mixed in here. Delta x is something over n. So if you pull that one over n out, well now you've got, we've still got a k to the third. If you separate this n in the denominator, you have n to the third here. So being able to see that and pull that apart Realizing that now the k over n is plugged into x to the third, and being able to find that, okay, a is 0 again, b minus a is 1, so 1 minus 0, so b has to be 1. Basically, this is a trickier version of what we just did. Okay, it's when everything's not quite so obvious is what we're looking at here. So, let's try a... As I said, B and C have some things about um, sequences in there that I don't want to go into. I'm taking a really quick shot here, just because is f of x the square root of x? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. At least in my brain it was without, yeah, without looking at the answer key. <laughs> right here, guys, we have the square root of k, yes? And it's the square root of n cubed. Well... Separate that n cubed. So I'm going to think about this as square root of k. Square root of n cubed. What if I say square root of n and square root of n squared? Why would I do that? I've got square root of k over square root of n times, what's the square root of n squared? n, and that's 1 over n. You see how I kind of pulled those pieces apart? And this one's similar to that example right up above there. But the idea here, and what I probably should have, well, I'll just go one more step and just keep writing on top of stuff. The square root of k over n, I can write as one square root if I want. And then one over n. And what you're seeing right here is this is f of x sub k times delta x. Are you seeing those pieces? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, with that in mind, do we have all the information? Can we find all the information? Well, 
Mario is making the claim that A is zero. Do you yeah. see it? Oh. Okay, so yeah. right here. Okay. <sighs> what do I want to say here? I'm just work over here. Delta X, we defined as one over N, right? Yes. F of X sub K is the square root of K over N. So if we're taking Sophie's guess that F of X is going to be the square root of X, then that means F of X sub K is K over N. Well, remember, x sub k is supposed to be a plus delta x times k. We need all those pieces to be there. Well, what's that mean? a is going to be 0. Delta x we already talked about, 1 over n times k. Does this work out to be this? Yes. yes. I get it. Okay. A little bit better than Okay, so A is 0, B is 1 because B minus A is supposed to equal 1, right? And so, are we supposed to be writing the integral? Yeah. No, we did. Okay. The integral from <laughs> what to what? Zero. Of? Okay, now B and C, as I said, do they show up in homework? I hope not. I don't think they do, but exactly. Oh my gosh, is it mostly what we've been doing? Oh no, it's just right a single page. Wait, Wait, Matt. Yeah. For all of the squares. That's fine. Express the area of the graph. This is crazy. Okay. I posted the answer keys yesterday when I was on school. G typing up the week's plans. So answer key should be there. Okay. See what you can do with it. I don't know. Bring back the questions tomorrow, right? Yeah. Let's try it again. Yes, let's. I agree. Try it again, and I'll check it later today.